Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. Now, it's also important to understand where prices have turned in the past, okay? because markets tend to peak and bottom near places where they have turned in the past. Stage one accumulations have lows that are very close to areas of past price support. And it could be long, long periods of time like that British pound chart where we actually keep bottoming every time we get close to 140. That goes back many, many years. And our tops usually happen near prior areas of uh, price resistance, closer to where prices have turned in the past too. All right. Now, new trading ranges tend to form near these prior tops and bottoms, which could either lead to a distribution phase if price closes below the lows of the trading range. And this is the really important part. I'm not going to predict, and I don't have a good track record of ever predicting that that's going to happen, um, but I can react. If price happens to close below this new trading range after a big move up in price, I can say, okay, this can be a brand new stage four decline phase, and I need to switch up from buying pullbacks in an uptrend to shorting rallies in a downtrend. However, if price breaks out through the top of that trading range and goes on to make new highs, that is what we call a higher accumulation phase followed by a new leg up. So I want to show you the first chart that we're looking at here, um, the dollar index, the dollar futures contract from 1999 to 1021 of 09. And we have a secular bear market happening here. We have a nice big long downtrend that we've been in. However, we also have a cyclical bull market in a secular bear market. We had this period. Now, this is a monthly chart, so it's important to understand that um, the time frames you're looking at, each one of these candles here is a whole month. And we also have two areas where I've marked off here, resistance from the year 2006 right here, and we also have an area of support down here from 2008. I marked these areas off because both of these areas were where prices ended up turning. Up here at the top, we actually rallied up into this resistance from 2006 between 90 and 94. And we had several months here, including the months of the financial crisis, to where we rallied into this resistance. And every time we did, that's where the top of this market actually happened um, in this little stage four pattern that you see here. Accumulation, followed by a markup, followed by a distribution, followed by a markdown. So we had this little four-stage cycle here play out very close to prior turning points in the market, resistance from 2006 and support down here from 2008. Okay, And that's the dollar futures contract. So support happens at places where prices have turned in the past. Buyers step into the market thinking that prices are undervalued, and they step in and they buy, expecting prices to turn higher. And buyers have memory. Sometimes they buy at a certain price, and if the trade goes in their favor, they remember that price, and they say, if price ever comes back there, I'm going to buy that asset again. And sometimes sellers who were short the market also decide that, well, this trade didn't work out so well for me. Here I have a chance to get out of this trade close to even. So they end up covering their short positions, and a lot of times that puts buying pressure in the market. And resistance, of course, has created at price levels where sellers come into the market in the past thinking the asset's overvalued and they start to sell, which causes prices to turn lower. And again, if sellers were successful selling an area, they may sell again when price comes back there. And buyers who were long and wrong at the time may decide that, uh, well, let me get out of this trade with a small loss. Mostly what they do that, it's to try to save themselves some pride. And I can give you an example. I happen to know still to this day people that are long Cisco systems from $80 from the bear market of 2000 waiting for Cisco to get back to 80 so they can get out even. So it's um, <laughs> I'm not one of them, by the way, but uh, I happen to know people who are like that. So once again now, 
um, trends, very important that we understand that there's different types of trends. Uh, there's trends inside of trends. Uh, as I've just mentioned, we have secular trends, which, can tra which contain several uh, cyclical trends in the opposite direction. So during these cyclical trends, we can have something called a primary trend, um, which is usually influenced by the economic or business cycle. And we kind of watch that on the higher time frame charts, weekly, daily, monthly charts, for example. Uh, then we'll have what we call an intermediate term trend, which is a profit-taking move counter to the primary trend. A lot of times people say that prices have gotten ahead of themselves in an uptrend, and so there will be a little sell-off. We recently had a 10% pullback in the Dow Jones Industrial Average in, in February, for example, and then broke out to new highs after that. So that would be called the intermediate term trend. And then, of course, the short-term trends are just little fluctuations, random reactions to economic data reports that get released during the month. And a lot of times these, um, these little gyrations will be great opportunities to trade if you understand volatility. And you can trade them on very, very small time frame charts. And um, you can try to react to that volatility and try to make short-term profits. Okay. So once again, um, on this particular chart, a visualization of these four stages, accumulation stage, Okay. followed by a stage two uptrend. And we also have intermediate term trends during this stage two uptrend. We have several of them here where we have little retracements. We pull back to a trend line here. And during this uptrend that we have here, uh, these are called the intermediate term trend or uh, counter to the primary trend or down. Uh, up at the top here, we have a distribution where we go sideways inside of a channel once again. And, of course, this could break out to the upside. It's no, no question that prices could continue higher. It's only after they actually do close here below this low to where we understand that we have something called a distribution phase. And at this point in time, of course, if this happens, most everybody's going to be bullish on the stock, bullish on the market. The news is all going to be good. Uh, the pros, of course, are going to be taking their profits and probably initiating short positions. And every one of these little counter-trend rallies that we have here, you'll find that the, uh, the buyers will be jumping on these counter-trend rallies, and what they're trying to do now is actually pick bottoms. And, of course, every time that happens, the market goes on to make new lows and traps these people, and eventually some of them get panicked out or they get margin calls and they get forced out. And so as you can see here in the uptrend when we have these pullbacks, we have the market has gotten its, uh, ahead of itself. It's ahead of the fundamentals. It shouldn't be doing this. And so everybody doubts the uptrend. And over here, this pullback is a buying opportunity is what you'll hear everybody call. And unfortunately, if it is a stage four decline, um, it's not. And you shouldn't be buying these. Or if you are, you should be taking your profits pretty quick. So the dollar index is a basket of six currencies, which is the euro, the British pound, the Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, the Swedish corona, and the Japanese yen. The index was created in uh, 1971 when the USA went off the gold standard. The largest component of it is the euro. And um, the ISE FX indexes allow you to trade each piece of this basket separately, which is great. The percentages here are mostly euro, 57.6% um, of the basket is the euro. The British pound is about 11.9%. The Canadian dollar about 9.1%. The Swiss franc, 3.6%. The Swedish corona is 4.2%. And, of course, the Japanese yen is 13.6% of the basket. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX Options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.